good. It is uh, September 4th. It is 15 hours into the day. Everybody's on vacation except for me. <laughs> Then again, this is the way research is. Research is 24/7, uh, 365. There is no real holiday because uh, the research stays with you on a continuous basis. So uh, this is something that certainly needs to be understood. But it is uh, actually not understood by a lot of people. So there's a lot that's kind of missing. Research becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of your life. It is the ultimate scavenger hunt. It is the ultimate game. It is the ultimate uh, puzzle. So for those of you who like putting puzzles together, this is where it is. And you live and die by the seat of your pants. There is no sort of... Uh, initial or fundamental direction, you find that as you go along, and this may be difficult for other people to accept, but this is, but this is again, maybe why, you know, I have an easier time than Lionel LeBron does uh, with uh, what's currently going on, and just, I'm used to being, having a life that doesn't really have much of a direction to it, it is what it is, and it is what it is, and it is, uh, it, it, it constantly sh shifts and changes, changes. It really depends on, well, nothing, and it all it depends on how I'm feeling on the day. Sometimes I'm feeling good, sometimes I'm not feeling good. That will make a difference. Well, there's always something to move forward, always something new to do. There's never really a, a, a you know, a boring day. And there's always so much to do. But the thing is, is that... The way the world situates itself now, and this is kind of the problem, as soon as you say that you need rules, someone will pop up. Yeah, that's right. If we don't have rules in society, then everything's going to everything's going to go to hell. Well, not necessarily, because rules aren't necessarily the fundamentals. It is the morality that is the fundamentals. And the, the, the people we're talking about today are fundamentally amoral. This is the situation. There is amorality. There is are immoral, they're amoral, they don't have an understanding of morality. There is no such thing as ethics. And so what happens when your ethics and morality disappear, well, what good is a constitution? The constitution just disappears, but well, what, what good is the law? You know, it doesn't apply to everybody, because everything, everything, is, everything is relative. And so once that occurs, you're now in a situation of ambiguity where the law and everything that you are around you is sort of arbitrary and there's no real sort of standard that says, okay, this is right and that's wrong. And it's the people who have power who are now dictating what should be what? What happens when the people who have power, who in many cases are just like think Alexander the Great, wasn't a great mind. He had, as his, as his advisor, he had Aristotle as his advisor. Most politicians today, the leaders of the world, all have advisors. You go look at Davos. What is Davos? The Davos is a group of nerds who put together scenarios. It's a live action role play. So they're playing it. And you begin to realize that in many cases people see the entire world, particularly at the top, as nothing more than a game. So maybe you gotta start playing the game. 
and because they're based on scenarios, maybe you can make up your own rules in some manner and see what works and what doesn't work. And I think as long as you have an understanding of where, where your morality is, as soon as you lose your morality, they've lost everything. Uh, unless, uh, you know, and the thing is you can see uh, that morality actually does have a sort of a universal truth to it. Based on the fact that, well, let's say, this morality here, doing drugs is a bad thing. Well, why is doing drugs a bad thing? Well, look at the drug addict. I know I have, I have friends, this includes alcohol. This is about drinking to excess and drinking too much, always getting drunk. Why is it a bad thing? Well, I have friends who are alcoholics. They're not happy. They're not living a good life. One person can't stop drinking to the point where she's almost at the point of dying. She doesn't want to die, but the thing is she can't stop drinking. This is the way she deals with life. There are others who are drug, addict, drug addicts who do the same thing. In order to deal with their life, they need, to, they need to be high all the time to avoid the pain of life. And the thing is, there are people who, 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 who deal like that. There, but the thing is, at the same time, there are those who aren't on drugs who are perpetually angry. And that anger destroys them. And so you can see the anger uh, has a you know a, a significantly negative impact on a person's life, and so you can you can now understand that there is a sort of a truth to morality. Go on ahead and, and, and pleasure yourself all your well want with your particular body parts, and you're going to get sick. What do you think STDs are? I mean, but the thing is, is that so when you look at this, you look at this globally to see what happens. You begin to understand that these are universal. The love of morality that, came, that, that, that was sort of given to us initially were some of the things that were should have, should have been obvious. We didn't need to have these particular rules <laughs> written down or specified because we knew that they would hurt. That the things that we were doing would hurt us. Why don't you kill another person? Because it, it actually, for the birds who does the killing. It affects them as well. It blackens their soul. It creates a level of depression and a level of, 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 of unsettledness within the soul. But, uh, that they have a hard time dealing with. They themselves have a hard time dealing with. And most of the people who, who, who are indeed abusive, but where do, where do they... You know, where do they come from? Well, more often than not, you'll find that they come from an abusive family. Well, there are cases where that is not necessarily the case, but the thing is that you will find this in many cases where a person has a bad background. And you'll see an enormous amount of anger there. Again, this is the whole anger issue. And if you know the person long enough, the person who is angry, and you find out a little bit more about their background, you'll also find that within the anger, there's an enormous amount of fear that these people are seriously uh, um, insecure. They have a lot of fears and phobias. And this is what we see today. Why, why do we see the mental health issue spiking the way it is? Well, because uh, COVID is the cause of phobias. It's not real. We create these fears. As long as this continues, what's going to happen is you're going to see mental illness rise. You're going to see suicides rise. You're going to see drug addiction rise. You're going to see alcohol rise. All these things are going to rise simply because of the fear, the fear factor that is, that is presented to us. Get rid of the fear, and we will have a better, much better life. the different dumb things to do. Fear initially comes in because of our sense of self. We want to protect ourselves. Alright, and so when someone insults you, 
It attacks your ego, it attacks your sense of self. Well, that's your fear that causes anger because you've been insulted. And this is the way you live. You, you, you don't let a person push you around. Tell them what this, uh, you know, get angry, get angry, be, be assertive. You're number one. Pat yourself on the back. We live in a world since the 1990s have been teaching kids that the self is the most important thing. Self-esteem. Esteem, if you look at the dictionary, is defined as an accolade, a attribute that is given to you by others as a high level of respect. When you give it to yourself, that's selfishness. That's narcissism. But yet, self-esteem has been at the center of everything since 21 hours into the fourth day of August, and we're heading home. that is completely dysfunctional. Hedon, hedonism was there from the beginning. The ambiguity of right and wrong was there from the beginning. It, is, it wasn't acceptable to bring it out right away. So they brought it out using Darwin as some sort of uh, underlying factor. Instead of using God to create the world, and you did your rules and so on and so forth according to God you now had Darwin and our rules were of the animal kingdom of course we were the highest evolved and so therefore uh, man was at the top of the food chain but what happened is, is that we see over a period of time is we have the de-evolution of man. The man no longer stays at the top of the food chain, but rather man becomes part of the food chain. And this is where a large chunk of the problem exists. Man is part of the food chain. No longer differentiated between between the lower functioning animals and so on and so forth. And you see that now man, is, it, it, because, and this is largely because of the atomic bomb, 
but again, it took a while for the for the understanding of the atomic bomb to sort of dissipate, and it didn't come into full swing until about just about the 60s. You had the sort of the arrival of postmodernism on your do doorstep, which was sort of emerge as the summer of love in 1968. This was the uh, uh, sort of receipt of the psychedelic era and actually produced the psychedelic era because the entire uh, the entire uh, sort of focus was on tripping out using psilocybin and LSD as a lysergic acid is from, uh, from uh, the fungus on, uh, on rye called ergot and ergot poisoning from uh, the fungus is what produces LSD this is its byproduct and it causes hallucinations and this is the one thing you have to be careful with with uh, making your own sourdough, sourdough bread and that there is this fungus that will get into the bread and actually cause hallucinations So this is what the 60s was based on, and it went, went through its uh, sort of its role, and at the same time, it, then you have uh, the emergence in the 80s of uh, Madonna, and Madonna comes in at a time where you have this uh, sort of uh, a revenge comp type of thing, because well, they had opened up the prisons, and uh, the so-called summer of love had turned into a decade of addiction. <laughs> So that's, that's how these, you know, these things do go in circle. We, we have seen this before. Uh, you know, they, they think, oh, things are going to go great, and they don't. There's a decade of cleanup afterwards, and of course, uh, not even, not even four years after the cleanup, basically, uh, in 1990, we head back down towards uh, the uh, summer, summer of love with the election of uh, Bill Clinton. He completely turns things around, and we end up back towards Camelot 2 and and the uh, sort of the, 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 the reintroduction of psilocybin and LSD uh, back into society, and now we're sort of repeating that kind of time frame. But then, while we have that time loop, uh, we are also sort of still in terms of that matrix. We're still within the uh, ultimate matrix. Of the Holy Roman, Camp Holy Roman Catholic Empire. So this is where we have to sort of look at and sort of look at and see how it evolved from the Holy Roman, Roman, Holy Roman Empire all the way through. Now remember, the Holy Roman Empire does, is, was not pre-existent. It's not Rome. We're not talking about the Roman Empire. We're talking about the, the, the later invention which really was the beginning of Europe. And was centered primarily on the Vatican as its sort of uh, figurehead. But then eventually it became... Well, it, it, after 700 years, the 1700s, things started falling apart. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, you can only do 700 years of war before, before people start judging your uh, about divine wisdom. And that's what it happened. So basically, you see finally by the 1700s, not only do you see the emergence of the uh, Protestant Reformation, but you're now getting other churches popping up. And this includes some of the so-called reformers uh, from Voltaire, uh, who have ideas of, well, Let's get rid of the church entirely, rather than, rather than simply getting, you know, getting rid of the papacy like the, like the Protestants did, and having their own figurehead and, and keeping, letting the church retain the power. And so instead of getting, instead of having the church have the power, give the power to the state, and get rid of the church altogether. And that's what we're, what we're seeing now. This was the move into humanism, where you no longer have a man made in the image of God, but rather God made in the image of man. 
And they thought everything was hunky dory. They, you know, they, you know, they, they thought that uh, they had ruled the world. They had conquered everything. They had conquered science and so on and so forth. But the whole thing was a lie. Most of your life was completely a lie. It was fiction. It was mythology. And that's because the researchers, like, you know, like Newton and Leibniz, who were at the core of this, they're the ones who dwelt with mathematics and the science. Everything is based off of Newton and Leibniz. That's their work. They were alchemists. They understood and knew that the Gnostic world was there. They weren't atheists. It was Voltaire who took the work of Newton and, Newton and Leibniz, including, and also Descartes, and reworked it into an, into, into an atheistic understanding. atheistic understanding sort of evolves with with uh, with uh, Voltaire but as I said before Voltaire was simply a playwright he didn't do any of his own work he simply took and bored and cut and pasted and voila atheism <laughs> what do they call that at this time they call it humanism and the number of other things is he, he became very famous because uh, well, he was illicit and you know Everyone loves the bad boy, and that's how he became famous, and that's how his uh, environment evolved, because, because everyone wants to be the bad boy, and so... This is where it became. This is what it became. But the thing is, Planck was a huge disappointment to the to, to the humanist crowd because Planck was the beginning of the, of, of quantum mechanics. It was the beginning of the end, and they tried to hide it as much as possible. But uh, uh, once they had the atomic bomb on the front pages in 1945, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, well, that was it.